minutes. We have 19 minutes worth of action-packed footage with Armina. We're going to get right into it. I just want you to know what she does. 45% chance to stun on the A1. Here we do AOE decreased defense of 60%, but we don't steal from them unless there's already a decreased defense up. So if you have a Bellower and a stun set, he'll automatically do his A3. If she follows after that, they have a decreased defense up. She's going to also apply her decreased defense, the bigger one, but she will steal 7.5%. That means she gets it. She takes it from them. She gets it to herself. This one doesn't do any damage. It's on a three-turn cooldown. If she does deplete their turn meter with this 20% of removing of their turn meter, she will stun them, which is great because anytime a stun occurs, she's going to get a 10% increase in turn meter. So if we have people out there that can stun, that's great. If she's in a stun set, that's the best thing for her, but we don't have her in a stun set right now. Let's get right into the footage. There's a lot, a lot to, to watch. So we're on Dragon 20. Now, the first thing about her that's really weird is her use of her A3 and her A2. Let's watch this footage and you let me know what happens first. We're going to use the same team over and over. Here we are on Dragon 20, neutral affinity, and she used the A3, which was cool because we had Silar in there to make sure that we could stun them. Again, same team. Spirit affinity, she has the advantage. She used her A2. Again, same team. Fire Knight 20. She used, what is she going to do? Okay, A3. So just to test it even further, we're back on another Spirit Affinity. What is she going to do? Right, she's going to drop the A2, correct? Decrease defense, which is what we want. So if she's the fastest in here, give that decrease defense up. We're good to go. That will work. We need to know first, and it's, it gets weirder than this. I'm going to show you. Dragon 20, we're going to have her do her A2 instead of her A3. Why? I don't know. I can't tell you. We're on stream. Everybody's trying to figure out. But let's just pay attention to how she's helping us out with all these stuns. She is not in a stun set yet. She's in a DPS set, so she looks like she's doing pretty good damage. But really, her modifiers, her multipliers are the same as a like 70% of the people out there. So can we make her look like she does damage? Yes. Is she doing more damage than 70% of the champions out there? No. It's normal. Standard stuff. Now, you'll see every once in a while she'll do her A3, deplete their turn meter if they are low enough, like this little spider here that's barely got any, and stun them, which is great. And then if she had a stun set on, on her A2, doing that AoE damage, she would stun as well, which would be fantastic. But even still, we don't have her in a stun set right now. We were testing her out. Man, we tested her on stream quite a lot, and then I did a lot of testing off stream. You're going to see her go through 120 Nightmare Campaign, no, 120 Doom Tower Hard, and beat it so be prepared to see that but we're going to show a lot more so let's get into whatever else she can do here so we can show you is she a strong champion maybe that's what you want to know is it worth having a three turn cooldown decreased defense and a little bit of turn meter reduction plus a stun on that a1 and then whenever anybody stuns she gets a 10 percent turn meter increase it can be but we've got her in a savage set right now doing amazing damage Again, she has the same multipliers as 70% of the champions out there. Could we come in here and make her look like she does damage and be like, oh my God, Armina's doing damage. Yeah, we can, but uh, it's stupid. It's stupid when we know all the multipliers of everybody. You don't need this. You need a stun set. So we're going to take all this off. We put in a stun set right now. Still a stun set that can do damage, which doesn't even matter. I tried to get a little bit of damage out of her. You could put her in HP gloves, HP chest, speed boots, stun set, and that would be fine. Because she's going to come in here. We're going to take this all off. She's going to come in there and she's going to stun everybody. She's got two chances then to stun on the A1. On the AOE A2, that decreases defense. She's got a chance to stun on that. And then on the A3, it won't make any difference because all she does is lower turn meter. And if she depletes turn meter, then she stuns them. So we're not worried about the A3. But that A2 comes around a lot. Remember, she's stealing turn meter on that A2 often. She's getting a stun on the A1. Now she has two chances, which gives her a 10% turn meter increase. Anytime she gets stuns on that A2 AoE, she's getting a 10% turn meter increase. So she's cycling through all that. Now, can she be effective for you by herself with a stun set? Yes. Without a stun set, she's not as effective by herself. You're going to have to bring in somebody like I did with Silar. Okay, now check this out. We're on Ice Golem 20. This is going to be a normal run. We've got decrease attack over there with Ox. You just saw it. She did her A2 right there. We've got Royal Guard coming in after. She's set up with a stun set. Are we going to get any stuns? Okay, she's doing decent damage there. Here, let's see if she gets any stuns picked up. There, she got a stun from her A2, dropping turn meter on our back guy there. Draco or Drake, whichever that is. And remember, she has two checks on that A1 to try to get a stun up. 
which is handy because then she gets that turn meter increase. We got some stuns there, quite a few from that AoE. And then she's back around to lowering their turn meter. That was fast, right? Really fast. 10% turn meter is no joke. It adds up. It's very quick, actually. So that helped us on this wave. There's no real help here. We've got a Renegade at level 50. We've got Ox doing decreased attack, which we need on the Ice Golem, and decreased crit rate, which is amazing. That little Jar Jar, Jar Jar's brother. Then we've got a turn meter reduction here from a lot of different people. Cold Heart from her A3 and then Royal Guard. Royal Guard's doing the mass amount of damage that almost got us killed. Luckily, we could take it because we had that decreased attack. But what do we want to see? We want to see our Armina come in here and stun some of them on her own volition, not from... Well, who else can stun here? Okay, it would have been her. She stunned him. We could have gotten a stun there. We're doing damage, decreased defense. She's our only decreased defenser in the crew. And she was attacking the boss for some reason. I don't know. Was that a counterattack? Okay, got a stun up. Stun up, turn meter. Can we get some more turn meter reduction? She works and looks nice. The thing is that if you already have somebody on a three-turn cooldown that can do decreased defense and decreased attack, then I don't really see a need for you to go out there and play her. For sure, if you have Stagnite, if you have Duck the Pierced, if you have anything like that, then there's no real reason to go out here and try to use the books first off and then try to have fun stunning. Even when you see what I do with her on 112 Doom Tower Hard. She's just a fourth person in there to get us additional stuns some more turn meter decrease. There we got a stun again. Picked it up. Look at all that turn meter increase. Remember, if there's already a decreased defense up and she's doing that A2, we're stealing from them. We're knocking them down 7.5 and she's gaining 7.5. So she's been doing that the whole time. We just keep an eye on her and look for her to... The white letters will come up to say that she's getting a passive, that 10% from a stun, and then you'll see a turn meter increase. Plus, we're getting turn meter increase from our masteries. Anytime a debuff falls off, we can get a turn meter increase which is huge. We keep cycling through there. That's what we always want to do. Now we're back on Dragon. Now, do you remember Dragon before she would do A3? We're going to put a Royal Guard in here. She would normally do... I think we're going to get to see both really quick. Watch. Right? A3. We didn't bring Silar that time, so we didn't get to stun them. Now, we take the Royal Guard out, and this is what we want. We want that decreased defense. Now she's doing her A2, so she's going to steal... She's going to steal from everybody. She's in stun set. She got a chance to stun and get turn meter increase. Because our Bellower did the decreased defense already, even though it was the lower version. Sure, she'll overwrite and put the bigger version up from her A2. But she'll also steal 7.5% from each and every one of them. Add it to herself. Plus, if she stuns anybody, she gets that 10%. So she's going to take turns. Very quick turns with Bellower in here. Plus, Bellower is in a stun set. So he can always apply a stun. You see her, her passive will be the white. It's like head rush head rush ahead or something weird like that. So she's going fast. Decrease there's the A2 again. Decrease defense, stealing and stunning, getting turn meter increase all the time. Turn meter increase, you just saw it from her again. Plus she did the decrease to them. And she got a stun off, I think, on Apothecary. But Bellower can too. Don't forget, Bellower can stun right now. But still, it's just gonna energize her up when he does. There she goes. She just got energized from Bellower going. Then you saw all the turn meter. Look at that. All the turn meter you saw when she did her A2 because they already got a decreased defense up either from her or from Bellower's A3 where he does decreased defense and decreased attack. And he always does that on auto in the beginning. So with him, you know, with help from people, she can be very powerful and fun. Is it necessary? Not everybody's roster is the same. You might not have an AOE decreased defense and decreased attack. You might not have you know, Duck the Pierce or Stagnite or somebody that amazing. So you need to bring her in because that's what you have for your roster. She could be fun. She definitely could be fun. I just don't know. I have mixed feelings about her. I have mixed feelings about whether she's going to do what she's supposed to do, either her A2 or A3, depending on what team you bring in, and then whether she's really going to help you out. Because you as a mid-game, early game account, you're not going to have a good stun set to put on her. And then whatever their sets are you going to put on her? I don't know. You might not have good support to go with her. It's much better if you can get that decreased attack up too. Because you always have War Maiden, right? War Maiden is out there. War Maiden, you can farm every single piece of her. You don't have to use epic books for. And this girl needs books. I mean, let's be honest. Everybody needs books. You want to drop it down to a three-turn cooldown. And you want to get a higher percentage chance to decrease defense. And to stun as well on that A1. Which is pretty fun when you stun on the A1. It's always fun. When you come in there and wrap them up. So we're just showing a run here and showing how effective she can be. We really don't have a big heals from Ox here. We've got a little bit. We've got help from all these champions. I mean, effective 
in a sense that I'm in game and I've got good gear. Do I have godly gear on her right now with that stun set? No, but I've got good gear on Bellower because I take him in the Doom Tower. Is it crazy gear? It's just stun gear. It's nothing fancy. You've seen it a million times if you watch any of my videos. Okay, 112 Doom Tower hard. Now, I don't have it slowed down because it would take forever. It took me, I don't know, 19 minutes to run through this, 12, 15 minutes. So now we're on a fast track of doing it. We've got decreased turn meter on Silar, slow speed. We've got four stunners, basically what it comes to. Our Drekstar Blutch one is here to give us that accuracy lead and the burns and sometimes provoke decreased attack. Okay, that's fine. But the other four are purely here to drop turn meter and stun. That's Bellower, Sile the Drakes, Armina, and Silar, right? That's it. Wrap them up. Get as many stuns. She just stunned on her A1 right then. And then what are they doing? They're energizing her to make sure she takes her turns. More turns for her, more stuns. A1, A2, more turn meter reduction on that A3, which is going to help Silar loop back around, help us all loop back around. This is going pretty fast. I thought wave one went really well after I ran it about five times. <laughs> it takes time sometimes. It's RNG. Doom Tower, especially waves like this, 112 hard, are just, when you're going to do this, wrap them up. With a whole bunch of stuns and lockouts and whatever else we always do with this core team. We always use Bellor, Sile the Drakes, and Silar all in a stun set. Now we've got Armina in a stun set, plus her turn meter reduction, plus all that turn meter that she's gaining to hopefully cycle back through those abilities and help us out. So now we're doing our A1s right now to get back to that wave two, right? We got to get ready for wave two. And hopefully you're able to see what I'm not really paying attention to right now because I'm kind of looking at the camera and talking to you. You'll be able to see where she's coming in and helping out. Now, three torments. <laughs> three, three torments, Doom Tower 112 hard. It's a headache, right? She's getting turn meter, so she's getting frozen. Other people are getting buffed, so they're getting frozen. All sorts of craziness with three torments. You know how it is. It can be a real headache to get through here. Luckily, Silar does decrease accuracy, which helps us out a lot. That way we won't get frozen as much. We're going in and target. We're not doing full auto right now. We're taking our time. We're going to switch to full auto in a minute. But right now I'm doing one at a time to make sure I can get control and we can get the burns up. Drekstar Blood Twin doesn't really throw out the burns, right? We have to make sure we get burns out on everyone. Once we get those all out there, we'll start cooking, right? They'll start taking everybody down. That's what we want. Even when we kill these torments, we got to kill them twice. And while we kill them twice, we have to keep stunning them. Because when a champion is stunned, they don't reset their cooldowns. And we can't take five, five or whatever it is, five turns so they can get back to doing their come back to life ability. Otherwise, we'll just sit here forever trying to beat them and then they keep coming back to life. So here we knock them down again. And they're burned up. It was pretty easy, right? And if you watch, she, I mean, she played a role. She played a role that I usually put her somebody else in here to either take control or to remove all these freeze. Maybe I have a Doom Priest in here. Maybe I have probably not a Seeker, or if I did have a Seeker, I wouldn't be able to do his A2. I'd have to come in here and just make sure I do his A1 to pick up any loose person so I can provoke on that, that A1 that he has, or anybody else like that, that I can, like if anybody gets loose, I can go after them because we have enough stuns. But hey, with her, it's pretty fun. She's got a use in the game... It's up to you and your roster whether you want to level her up or not. My expert advice on this game, whatever you want to take that for. I don't really call it expert advice, but my advice in playing the game a lot and getting help from a lot of you people out there when we're on stream is that she is <laughs> she's fun, but there are way better champions out there. There are much better champions. If I had her and I had a slew of a whole bunch of all their new champions then I would just put her in the vault. I would not work on doing her. But you saw that A1 can stun sometimes. We do have two checks because we're in a stun set. We have Fearsome Presence, 5% additional. So she's up to a 50% chance, I think, to stun on the A1 with Fearsome Presence. Plus she's got the artifacts on to stun. So we get two checks there. Not bad. She's cycling through. She's, she's helping us. There are times in here that if she didn't stun on the A1, we would have been in a lot of trouble. Let's jump forward a little bit. We're at six minutes. This is going to take forever fighting these three. Three, three, till they're dead. Okay, now, wave three went really well until the very end. Really, really well. They were all wrapped up. We had A1s going on with Bellor lockouts. We had stuns everywhere. We started getting burns up until right here. Till it was like these three, and it took me forever just to beat those three down. But I think we're going to be all right. I mean, I know we're going to be all right. I beat it. It just took much longer. So if that would have happened when we first zoned in, 
we might have been in trouble. It's RNGs, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> It's the RNG, right? Sometimes you're going to do smooth runs. Sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're going to get the stuns from all these stunners in here and control that we have. And sometimes you're not going to. You just got to keep running it and running it if you're going to do this kind of team. So, you know, who knows? You should be able to make it, but she's a fun champion. Let me know your thoughts about her down below. You know we beat this. You've seen everything out there. Would you level her up? Is she even going to work for your team? Is she going to do her A2 or A3 on your team from what you saw us do? We ran her in Dragon 19 and Dragon 18 as well for different affinities. And it seemed like it was affinity based. I don't know. Then we did that in Dragon 20 where we switched around the team and she did her A2 instead of her A3. She's making me crazy. So whatever you think she's going to do for you, let me know if she's working out for you. What kind of teams are you running with her? Let us all know down below. I appreciate your time. Thank you all so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you all in a video soon.